Starting a YouTube channel is closely related to being an entrepreneur. You want to monetize your passion and share your opinion with the world. And that's cool. You spend countless hours on research and you try to find a niche for yourself, looking at countless cameras on Amazon to choose from, and the list goes on and on. But in reality, your first videos are not going to be good anyways. So why spend too much time planning, learning, and waiting for the perfect time? There is no perfect time to start a YouTube channel. If you wait until you have all the equipment, it's going to take you months. And who knows, maybe you're gonna buy all the necessary equipment and store them in your garage and you never use them. Waiting for something so that you can make content on YouTube is useless. Just start with what you have and build upon that. If you look at Mr. Beast, PewDiePie, Ali Abdal, and many other successful creators, they all started on a budget camera with a lousy microphone, considering they even had one. And they did pretty well. Mr. Beast started making videos when he had no professional cameras, no microphones. PewDiePie started making videos on his phone in 2011 when he was working at a hot dog stand and he had no professional equipment. Ali Abdal started with a very basic camera and the lighting wasn't even great, but he did got started. Sometimes we underestimate the importance of just just getting started and we think there is going to be a perfect moment or a perfect piece of equipment that will change the game forever. Look at all your favorite YouTubers and you're going to see that they started very small and they were growing over time, not overnight. That gets us to point number two, which is making videos. A lot of YouTubers, myself included, find ourselves embroiled in perfectionism. We want to hit the jackpot in every single video and gain attraction. But in reality, this doesn't really work out. Some videos are going to pick up and some won't. The most important thing is to make sure you're consistent. Posting one video a week is better than making one perfect video a month. Don't get me wrong, you can make one video a month and still make it on YouTube, like Matt Davila for example, but when you don't have an audience yet, consistency on a weekly basis is key. And here are five tips that will help you be consistent. First, focus on your low-hanging fruit. What does low-hanging fruit mean? Most, if not all, content creators have this very very long list of topic ideas that they want to create as content. One of the best things to do with that is to choose which topics are the most excited to create and which ones are the easiest. By doing that, you'll be able to focus on the topics that you're confident about and also quick and easy to create. Also, this creates a foundation for your channel so that in the future, when you have more time to spend in creating content, your channel already has a running start. And tip number two, motivate yourself by setting milestones. My next step for you is to set some realistic milestones like your first 100 videos or the first 1000 subscribers, then motivate yourself to reach those milestones and celebrate them. Now, remember that there are milestones that you can and you can't control. For example, you can control the number of videos you publish, while you cannot control the number of subscribers you get. So I would suggest you to set milestones that you can control. And tip number three, create a routine that fits your life. Earlier this year, I've walked you through my different workflows on my vlog and YouTube channel. While those are working for me now, it wasn't the same back when I had a full-time job. Back then, I would focus on just one small thing each day of the week so that I can create my video. On Sundays, I would focus on choosing the topic for my video. On Mondays, I would just record and shoot anything that I need for my video. Then on Tuesdays, I would create the rough draft edit of my video. And next, I would finalize my edits on Wednesdays. So I would publish my video every Thursday. Number four, settle for imperfection. Another thing that will surely help you out at being consistent on YouTube is to settle for imperfection when it comes to your YouTube videos. I myself am still settling for imperfect videos. I'm not a filmmaker or anything, and I just want to share my content and give it to my audience. I always let my consistency be the drive of my YouTube channel instead of perfection. Because honestly, even if it looks perfect, we will still find a flaw to it. And number five, focus on the things that will matter after five five years. This last tip can be very tough pill to swallow because we need to think about the things that you're doing right now and ask ourselves, is this going to matter in five years? That's because we should want to put all our energy on the seeds that will surely grow in the future. And once you've built consistency for a few months and you have a clear schedule that suits your nine to five job, you're going to move to the next step to 
to be original. Let's face it, 99.9% .9 of YouTubers are not original. If the content is original, the thumbnail and title are gonna be inspired by another video. If the thumbnail and the title are original, the content has to be somehow inspired by another video, and the list goes on. But there is always room to add your creative juices to your content. It can be the editing style, it can be the thumbnails, the title, even the way you present yourself on camera. And no matter what your style is, there will definitely be people out there who are gonna love it, but it has to come from within yourself first. Forget about views, monetization, and subscribers and ask yourself just one question. Who is my target audience? You need to know who you're creating videos for. Your target market. How can you hope for people's attention if you don't understand your audience, their problems, or their moods? And even though this seems so obvious, many creators just ignore it. To understand how important it is to know your audience, let's take a brief look at how YouTube's algorithms actually work. The algorithms of this platform, when making recommendations for each individual viewer, they use the history of their viewing and searching habits, as well as many other signals that create typical profiles of people on YouTube. It turns out that the algorithms themselves rely on the profile of the audience when searching for a suitable video for viewers. YouTube will analyze your metadata, content, and visuals, and they will determine what type of audience your topic belongs to, and they select the first trial category of viewers from that topic. Topic. Everything sounds pretty straightforward. But why does the platform not reach your target audience very often? There may be two reasons here. You may have organized the video incorrectly or included confusing metadata, causing the platform to be unsure of who to show your videos to. So the algorithm will merely test a random audience subset in a massive niche where your channel may fit. Unfortunately, YouTube will almost certainly not be able to accurately place your videos into the appropriate categories you would want it. And if you don't, clearly define your data for YouTube, then there is a great chance of being misplaced. This is why it's so important to start with narrow topics and YouTube itself will recommend you to a wider audience or a wide range of people in the presence of a large number of positive signals. Keep in mind that if YouTube can't find your audience, it will stop trying. After several attempts to find potential viewers, the algorithm will just stop showcasing your content. But if it finds your audience, it will, on the contrary, expand your video your reach. You shouldn't laser in so much that the subject of the channel becomes too narrow and there are not enough potential viewers. If you take a look at a channel that goes by Dad, How Do I, we're gonna see that the thumbnails, titles, and the editing style aren't too fancy. Actually, 90% of YouTubers use better designs than this channel, but that's what makes it unique. The objective of this channel is simply to help people do basic skills that a father would teach his kids to do. So this creator connected to his audience at a very deep personal level, and that's very powerful in the age of cutting edge editing technology. That doesn't mean that every channel should emulate this model. It's just an example to show you that you don't always have to play by the rules. Sometimes a bit of originality will make you go places on this platform. Once you put yourself in the shoes of your viewers and audience and you know about their pain points, you should make a list of the most common problems the average person in your audience would have and try to deliver content on these struggles first. Just the same as what Rob Kenny did on his channel, Dad How Do I? He started going viral after a video titled How to Tie a Tie. So he presented a very simple solution to a very common problem. And that gets us to the script. Some creators who don't see themselves as good at improvising on camera, they like to script their video word for word and read off of a teleprompter, while others like to just outline their scripts to give them the flexibility of improvising. So you need to try both to just see which style works best for you. But when you're scripting, whether you're going to improvise or read from a teleprompter, either way, you need to pay great attention to your hook. The first 10 seconds of your video determine whether or not people are gonna keep watching it. So it needs to be catchy enough to get your audience's attention and especially your unsubscribed audience to watch a big chunk of your video and this sends a good signal to YouTube that your videos are worth watching and that ultimately gets you to rank higher in the search results and the suggested videos. And to hook your viewers, you can create a curiosity gap. You need to tease your viewers by hinting that something interesting is coming, but they need to watch your content and see what that is. The curiosity gap motivates your viewers to click on your video 
videos and watch them, you're basically banking on people's natural curiosity. You just hint at something in your video channel trailer and people will be excited to click through your videos to see more about it. Another way to inspire the curiosity gap is to promise that your viewers will get something from watching your video. Naturally, they will benefit more by subscribing to your channel and getting notified when you post a fresh video. So you should also drop this in when inspiring your curiosity gap. People's attention span has become way too short and capturing their attention is becoming an arduous task. If your video's content is incredible, you still need appropriate hooks to capture people and entice them to watch your content. This is one of the best ways to keep your viewers coming back. Using quality hooks pays off in the long run because these have a beneficial influence on the overall watch time. Hooks can get more views and more subscribers to your channel and your content can rank higher on the platform. And in this video right here, I'm gonna show you how to rank higher on YouTube step by step.